ready. Just make sure y'all can hear me. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's today. Today is Wednesday. It's the third Wednesday of the month on Let's Talk Business with Cheryl J. Cousseau. I am here today with my co-host, Mrs. Jeanette Diva J. Hort Smith. Woo-hoo! Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, Facebook family, we are trying to make sure that we stream live because we've got some guests in the audio, in the studio today, and we want to make sure that you can hear them and see them as well. Jeanette, can you believe it's actually been a month since you were on the show? I know. Uh, you know, a lot has happened. A lot has happened. In this month. It's crazy. <laughs> We'll decide how you want to catch up with what's happening in the month. But what we want to do is I'm going to go ahead and pan um, my device around so that you all can see the two incredible um, hosts that we have here. The very special Michelle Maynard. And we'll she's saying hello to you, Facebook family. And we'll pan around so that you can also see. And I know if you can't catch it on my camera, you can catch it on Diva J's camera. And it's David David. It's the fifth. That's five. Woohoo! I love that about our culture. When you can see that um, that generational rich heritage is passed down. What is it? It's National Black Business Month, you know today. So for those of you who are on Facebook, and hey, we already see people um, chiming in. We thank you, tuning in. We thank you so much. National Black Business Month. All month long, we've been here with you in Touch News Radio, in the studio. We have DJ CEO right here. here. (laughs) What's up? What's up? And so we have been talking about and shouting out black businesses all month long, whatever day it is of the month. That's the number of black businesses we've been sharing with you. Some you may know, others you may not. But there's one common thread when it comes to starting a business. The first question after that idea sets in, you've thought about it, you prayed about it, that money does not fall from the sky. The question is, how are you going to fund this business, this concept, this idea that you want to launch, that you think that you're the only one doing it, and it's very, very important that you do this? We have a lot of small businesses. We have mid-sized businesses, and we have those businesses that have crossed over. Right, Diva J? Absolutely. Now, all three of us here that are hosting the, the talk show today are small business owners. We've got Diva J here, and you all know that she is the president and CEO of Dash Coordinating and Marketing, LLC. All right, all right. And then we're in the studio with In Touch News, In Touch News Radio, the proprietors, the founders of the Power Couples Ball. They also put on fabulous events for us, and that's DJ CEO. Hey, Tampa Bay Tammy. So she's the reason that a lot of us, and women in particular, that are on the air today. So talking about funding your business, there are so many different ways you can fund your business. And one of the things that that come to us when we're talking about small business owners is where are we going to get that capital to fund our business? Not every entrepreneur is in a position to call a Wells Fargo. You're just not. Facts. Those are facts. I see them all shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we wanted to do here was talk to you about what you do when you have that idea. What's next? The other things we wanted to be able to share with you And we can go down the list, um, some things that even um, Jeanette and I um, have talked about and helping you to understand. But before we get into all of that, we want you to meet our special guests. So I'm going to pan my device around. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned our guests, and here we go. That's Michelle Maynard. And Michelle, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I am the Senior Community Development Officer with Wells Fargo, and... I just turned 30. Yeah. <laughs> she is on the right show. Yeah. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. She cannot speak to that. That's Diva Day. And I'll say this because you all know that Dr. Shawnee Davis, Dr. Shawnee Davis is 25 years old and I am 28. Which makes me 15. So, oh. <laughs> so Michelle, welcome. But let me tell the truth. I just turned 30. Oh. 
Wells Fargo. Oh, nice. Whoa. Congratulations. Awesome, 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 awesome. Let's see. Oh, no, you need to catch this one. The 30-year-old. It'll come back on. Keep going. Remember, our camera's there, and you can look right up there. No, you've got to tell us more about yourself. Oh, okay. how, did you, how do you end up spending 30 years in the banking industry? Yeah. I have been blessed to work in various areas of Wells Fargo. I've worked in consumer banking. I've worked in mortgage. I've been a branch manager. I've worked in commercial real estate. And I have managed a, a pilot program with the bank for women and minority business development. Oh, ladies, wow. listen up. And I have also worked in our market research department. Currently, as the community development officer, I work folk with uh, primarily nonprofits and municipalities that are focused on small business growth, housing affordability, financial stability and economic revitalization focused on those th those things primarily we're looking for how wells fargo can continue to make an impact in those areas by building strong partnerships with others who are trying to do the same thing i appreciate that i appreciate that and, and here you're on the campus of the fap group 5508 co-working and collaborative exchange shout out to our CEO, Mr. Derek Blue. Yes, you've got the bankers in your house today. Wakanda. That's what he likes to call <laughs> this, Wakanda. And all of you have been here. Black Wall Street experience. You all were there. You heard him say, this is Wakanda. Woo, woo. Yes. <laughs> so, Michelle, 30 years. You've just about held every job imaginable. Yes, the great thing about that and having experience of many areas of the bank is that in working in community development now, I know a lot about where to send the right people. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know all of the answers, but in many instances, I know who does. Mm hmm. Okay, well, if we had a theme other than it being National Black Business Month and we're here to talk about business, we're talking about supporting um, just businesses in general, particularly small businesses, because that's what we have here on this campus. Um, mm -mm -mm. If you don't know, you know where to send the people. Where to send the people. One of the reasons we are having her here on this show today, DJ CEO, is so that we can get the information, what we need in order to run our businesses. And if it's not with you or your banking institution, you're here to tell us or you send us where we need to go. Absolutely. Diva J, do you have a question for our, our banker here? And then we're going to roll the mic over to DD5. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> of course. I have tons of questions. No, no, you only get one right now. All right, one it is. <laughs> Um, so as a small business owner, uh, when I started my business, I was concerned about accumulating debt. So I would reinvest in myself and, and people mention, you know, um, business loans. So one of the questions I had for you was how do you position your small business so that you can qualify for a business loan or what type of loans would one even consider straight out the gate without, you know, I, I think I'm traumatized from student loans. <laughs> So I was like, oh, no. But, you know, what, what, would I, what are some things that small business owners consider fresh out the gate when considering loan opportunities? Okay. Now you asked two questions. I right? did. Let me, ask the, let me answer did. the first one. Thank you. The first one is, what are some of the things you do first? Before you borrow money, you first get your own house in order, mm -hmm. your personal house in order. Okay? Because you are your business. Yes. A lot of people forget that. They forget that, you know, if Go Michelle ahead. Maynard wants to start a business, they're looking at Michelle Maynard because the business doesn't exist yet. And even if the business has been in business for six months, they're looking at Michelle Maynard. Michelle Maynard, how do you, how do you handle your money? How do you handle your credit? Do you have a habit of mm. borrowing and paying back? They're looking at that first. And then we can talk about borrowing 
for your business. Sure. Okay. Startup loans are not easy to get, but there are some products out there for that. But you have to make sure you have put yourself into a, in a position to be able to borrow. All right. Now, I don't know if we're going to talk a little more about this or not, but there are some things ahead of time mm -hmm. that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite sayings is make it difficult for a lender to tell you no. Hmm. All right. And there are some things that you can do to make sure that it's going to be real hard for them to tell me no because I've got my house in order. And that's some things. Now, when it comes to specific products and things that um, you should look at when you're starting a business and you just or you just started and you're trying to figure out what product, there's, there are a few options for you. And I am going to defer to my partner in Wells All Fargo, right. Mr. David Davis, All who right. is well, one we, of our bankers. Well, that and that's okay. And we are looking forward to hearing from you. And just, I just want to make sure that we shout out to our Facebook family. Um, I know we're having our signals are going in and out. Hello, all of you. I just love that DD5 because, um, but it's too. David. You like you like DD5. <laughs> I, like I don't know. We just like to no throw for, around no acronyms for. around here. <laughs> so, like you know, it. Derek Blue has the DB3. And so, um, wouldn't be the first. What wouldn't be the first? So, also here joining us. So, if you happen to, uh, my phone just went out. So, hopefully, Diva J is still going over there. Mr. David Davis the fifth is also joining us. He is here from Wells Fargo. And I love this. He's a personal banker. But what I love most about it is he is also a business advocate so he's here to hear our questions this is a call-in show and there is a call coming through now hello caller hello hey caller you're on the air with let's talk business with sjc i'm here with my co-host diva j and hello. our guests maybe you saw the flyer earlier from wells fargo we have michelle mayner and david davis the fifth and so who are we listening to um, Riley, Riley from Tampa. Hey, Riley from Tampa. Thank you for calling. How did you hear about In Touch News? Um, actually, uh, David actually sent out a flyer, so I'm just oh, tuning the in millennial. to listen. Oh, <laughs> David's got some good people out there then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, good job. Oh my gosh, when he was in our office and we were just kind of going over some preliminaries, boy, he was on his phone. What's the hashtag? And I'm Absolutely. looking at Michelle. <laughs> She's looking at me, and we're like, we need a class. <laughs> but thank you so much for calling in. And so you're here. You're calling in to su to support David. Is there a question that you have? Um, well, sure. Um, I know that the the um, segment today is about black businesses. How do you um, suggest that someone get more information on how to start a business and really how to just grow that business within the community? Oh. But that's you, David. That's a great question, um, Riley. Uh, I can tell you, so as a personal banker, I've been a personal banker for uh, three and a half years with the company. And a common theme for us, especially when you're dealing with small businesses, are, like Michelle was saying, getting the house in order, right? Mm. So before you come, what have you done already? You know, a lot of people, as you said um, earlier, say, hey, I want to come in and I want to get a loan. And you're like, okay. And we come in looking good, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Suits, you know, <laughs> every, everything. They, they, they come in suited and booted. And it's, suited and wanna, booted. Want to get a loan. And that's a great that's a great question. However, you got to know where to start. So um, a few things I like to educate small business owners, whether business owners in general, um, is the place to start. You want to first make sure that you have an idea of what your business is. So many times we find, oh, I think I want to do this. Or, mm. you know, I've seen someone else do this. This should be easy. Well, have you done the research? Have you actually found out what it takes to, to run that business? Have you reached out to any of your competitors, per se, to see how they how they do business? What kind of issues are they having? What are some common things that they run into? Um, here's the thing. The wheel doesn't have to be reinvented. So if someone else is already in that lane, mm -hmm. call them. Go All to their right. office. Find yeah. out what they're doing, right? And then the next steps are to actually get your business in order. So a lot of people, they may have done a business plan. They may have the idea, hey, I think I want to be on this side of town. I want to be in this location. But they've not even gone to the Secretary of State website to file their mm. business document. Mm -hmm. oh, Licensing. You have to uh, get you have to get your paperwork in order. Sounds like a SWAT report, too. Listen, you've got to get SWAT your paperwork analysis. in order first because mm -hmm. that's what's going to certify your business as okay. its own standing entity. So 
I always recommend starting there um, with SunBiz and then start a relationship with your bank, uh, wherever that may be. Um, go in and actually sit down with the banker. You know, we I, I know we wear suits and we, we, we look good, but we actually do stuff, you know. <laughs> Come in and ask questions. <laughs> ask them, hey, this is what I'm thinking. What is it going to entail for me to do? What do I need to do first? What are my steps? And that's really the, the best stepping um, stepping stone to begin. Mm-hmm. Okay, we That awesome. relationship, it really is key. You know, there is no dumb you, question. All right. Did you hear that, Riley? The only yes, craziness. Great. Thank you for that. The only craziness is not asking the question mm-hmm. and not walking asking. away uneducated. Mm. Totally agree. You guys are you guys are giving us some great pointers. Now, Riley, have you considered yes, a business yourself? Um, not necessarily. My mom um, owns a, a beauty spot. I mean, not a beauty spot, like a hair a hair shop. Okay. Um, Congratulations. In, Florida, in Tampa. Right. So they always have like open um, rooms. So I didn't know if I wanted to, you know, start something, maybe lashes or something like that. But I didn't know. I was just wondering how you guys would suggest um, moving forward. But that definitely helped a lot. Well, listen, I want you to hold on for just a second because you had such a great question for David. But can we allow David to tell us a little? So, you know, David, we don't. We're trying to, well, we know who he is, but we want our global audience, in case you didn't know, David. In Touch News Radio is global. It's all over the world. We're liable to get a call from England, so sit tight. Love it. But what we would like to do, and I'm going to pan my device around so that we can capture you, is first hear about you and the... Uh Let's see, is that Michelle's cup in the way? You see yourself? Nope. Okay, so the microphone. Jeanette, you can catch him over there. But listen, because it's a call-in show, you can also go to InTouchNews.com and you can stream this, pick the show up live right now. You can put your comments um, on there as well. So in case you miss it on any of our cell phone devices, it's there. Plus, the show will be uploaded. But let's back this train up for just a bit. DD5, tell us who you are and what you're all about. We've heard a little bit. And what you do over there with Wells Fargo? So, uh, I've been with the bank now. I'm a personal banker. Uh, three and a half years. It'll be four in January. Woo woo. Woo woo. Okay. Congratulations. Celebrate, celebrate. Surviving in banking. There we go. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's it's interesting. I like to describe what I do at Wells Fargo as building and maintaining relationships. Mm-hmm. That's Love the most that. important part. I know a lot of people, you you think, oh, it's a banker. You know, they, they give loans. And, yeah, we do that. But we also focus on relationships. You know, you come in one day and you're just opening up a checking account or a savings account, right? You just got a new job, brand new job, and now you're getting your direct deposit. That's great. But what do you have coming up? You know, mm. we're working that relationship. It's not just about what you're doing today, but let me find out more about you so we can help you in the future. Um, I think many times people will come in and, you know, they, they have this one track mind. This is what I'm going to come in and do. And they leave with a better experience because now they know they have someone in their corner. I think, and and Michelle, you've been doing this way longer than I have. Uh, Kudos again. But (laughs) Michelle would would, would agree, you've got to establish relationship with the people in position or at least who can get you to someone in position because that's what's going to be most beneficial. And so that's what I love to do. Build relationships right at the desk. Okay. And so that that business advocacy part. Mm -hmm. So that was actually something that I set out for um, about uh, two years ago, actually. Okay. Um, I really have a, a a strong liking for small business. Always I have. Love it. Um, you know, I used, I once considered myself an entrepreneur, but um, mm-hmm. so what I like to do with that is we we do uh, different courses, different certifications to make sure we're staying up to date with the current news of the business. Right. So it's not just the people that come in, but also the mm-hmm. businesses um, in the different markets. You know, uh, your, your manufacturers. We want to know what's up to date with with those businesses. People in your trade industries, we want to keep up to date with those industries because those are the people that are going to come in or that you reach out to that may need some assistance. So it's really a great opportunity to learn more about small businesses and just be an advocate for them. We appreciate that because that's what, as small business owners, that's exactly what we need. So, Riley, thank you so much for for calling into the show. We appreciate that. Thank you for having my question. And and not only that, so that thought that you have and you're thinking about um, entrepreneurship, if if that bug is there, girl, or if that itch is there, you've got, (laughs) you heard it. Wait, Michelle has something she wants to say, Riley. Riley, you also, you also asked a final piece about your mom's shop. And, okay, so yes. now what? Okay, she has the shop. Now what? How do you grow? 
where do you grow from here? Mm-hmm. And oh, one of the things that I think every business needs to look at is how are they making money? How are they growing? And what makes sense for them? As an example, if I buy something for a dollar, I can't sell it for a dollar and maintain my business. But if I buy it for a dollar and sell it for a dollar fifty, okay, I'm making a little bit of money, but I also can't pay somebody two dollars to sell it. Those are things that every business right. really needs to look at. So if your mom, as an example, has hired um, stylists in her shop, she needs to look at the total cost of running that shop. So she's looking at her revenue, how much is it bringing in every month? And then look at her costs. How much is it costing her to keep those doors open every month? I mean, total costs. To turn the lights on, to use the water to wash folks, wash folks' hair, what she's paying out, all of that, and see what her net profit is. If the net profit is not sufficient, then she needs to reassess mm. and say, okay, what do I need to do differently? What do I need to do that I'm not doing right now? What expenses do I need to cut? Or where do I need to increase my revenue? Those are things that she might need to consider, but that's every business. A lot of people have wonderful ideas when they start a business, but they don't think that part through. They don't think about the cost of that idea. Michelle, y'all didn't know this, but... Raleigh, thank you so much. Thank you for asking the question. Thank you for sharing your mother's business because you opened up an an entire new discussion. Michelle was going to talk about it a little later on. But in dealing with reality, these are the questions we must ask ourselves if you're going to be in business and you don't want to have to, you know, constantly struggle. I see DJ CEO over there with the microphone right at his his mouth. But again, thank you. Are we going to break for commercial or are you going to ask your question? Yeah, we're going to take a break. But uh, Raleigh, you can go to YouTube. Uh, We're streaming live there. And you can also go to Facebook. Okay. We're streaming live on Facebook as well. Did you hear that? Uh, okay. And, and of course, you. the website is always streaming, InTouchNews.com. All right. Thanks Thank again, you. Raleigh. Right, Thanks Raleigh. for calling. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Well, we get to say hello to our Facebook family. Thank you so much. Hey, Heidi. And we're shouting out. Oh, you have Curtis Stokes. Hey, Curtis, you got a question. We got the bankers in the house. When it comes to reality radio, everyone is a star. I know that's right. On your smooth soul and R&B station. On the World Wide Web. Access, Access granted. granted. In Touch Radio. Call oh, Ricky Ricky. So believe we hunted down 813 Everything gon' be okay, call Ricky, he coming He taking kids to the floor to grab a pin of sun down 1-8-4-3-6-1-Rick That's one 8 4 6 one 4 Never word from the point forward, just recline Just ask Ricky, push your boy statewide Just in case you missed it, I'ma tell you one more time one 8 4 3 6 one Rick. Call Ricky, ask Ricky Legal medical referral service. The doctors and lawyers in our network are trained in handling auto injury claims and getting you the best medical treatment and recovery. Now, 1 361 Rick. That's 1 361 7425. Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ask Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. 
Florida has created more than 1 million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures Scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. Because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. What she's got going on. And we are back. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk Business with SJC. I'm here. It's the third Wednesday of the month with my co-host. Shout out to Diva J. Hey, hey. So we are here in the studio in Touch News. We had a caller that came in with some um, great information, but a special thank you to the in-depth um, answers that were given to her by both Michelle Maynard and David Davis. And so this is a call-in show. The number is 813-444-9588. You have an opportunity. The bankers are in the house. SJC. Yes. I got a question for Michelle. You got a question? Michelle. Where did you find this smooth talking brother from? Oh, oh my you got goodness. All the Woo. And good looking too. Oh, no doubt. No, no. I take it. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's the fifth. Look, yeah, he's the fifth. <laughs> you got to give he some answers. He is, he I is tell you really what. good. Wells Fargo is fortunate to have this kind of talent in, mm. in David because another thing that he does is he will also when he can Uh-oh. get away from his desk is he'll go out and deliver financial education oh. um, mm. to groups it is critical that this information yeah. gets shared and he doesn't mind going out and doing it how That's do awesome. you how do you compare wells fargo to <clears throat> any of the other banks what what makes you all stand out David Davis. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Right there. Okay. Good Good answer. I think our team, our team, uh, we have a great team. We have some good people. We have some people who are committed to um, helping our customers and our community succeed financially. That's great. He also I think is that, very I think that's passionate. a big differentiator. Okay. And I'm not saying the other banks don't have that. Because when it comes to helping, there is no competition. Oh, oh, the mic. We're all we're all we're all yes, doing sir. that. Okay. Y'all heard that? All right. So, so David. Yes, sir. Uh, DD five. Yes, oh, we love it. We love it. <laughs> DD five. You know you got to start your new Facebook page now. DD five. DD five. DD five go live. It's actually already a family name. Oh, good, good. Actually, Diva J said it. DD5, go live. Go live. Write that down. I like that. Write that down. I ain't going to charge you for that. Where did you, <laughs> I'll take, I'll take it for you. Where did you go to school? Uh, I've gone to local schools here, so I graduated from uh, Riverview High School. Spent okay. a little bit of time okay. up on the hill oh, at FAMU. Are you, you born and okay. raised here? Yes. Oh, wow. I'm, 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 I'm a local born. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. We, we've got deep roots okay. here in, uh, in Tampa Bay. Love oh, it. Very good. All right. We love That's that. Good. So you know, you can, ex- you know what you experience, what we experience here. You know the communities. Yes. You, no one has to come in and tell you. You can go in, look around, see where there is a need. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you've taken it upon yourself to go in and educate folk. So um, my first year with Wells Fargo, I was kind of figuring out banking, right? I've always done customer service, but I didn't quite know banking. And okay. so uh, one thing my manager says all the time, she says, you know, you can teach banking, but you can't teach people. Mm. And so... Um, I like people. Um, I like to help people more specifically. And so I did an event. I think it might have actually been with Michelle where we went out and I watched them do financial literacy. And I said, I want to do more of that. And so, you know, a beauty of our of our position is Wells Fargo is they're they're, they're not holding us back from that. If We want to go into the community, you know, whether it be we go over to uh, Oak Park Elementary, Mm -hmm. whether it be we go over to some of the boys homes here, uh, Daco down the street. We can give financial literacy for free. And and help the community. Uh, as you as you, that that is my passion. It that's is. I think that's what I love to do more than anything. The desk is fun. Don't get me wrong, but getting out and putting the seed in the community so that they can grow for later later uh, success is, is super important. 
That's Thank amazing. You. That's that's awesome, and we appreciate that. Thank you for the question, um, DJ CEO. Sure. And we're going to pan over because Diva J has another question that we would like to ask on on one of our talking points. We wanted to be able to discuss with you um, what Wells Fargo or a banking institution can do when it comes to small businesses and those um, individuals and entrepreneurs who are looking for um, funding. Michelle broke that down for you already. Mm-hmm. She said we may talk about it later, but she did. Uh, and the, the beautiful part about this show is you will have the opportunity to go back, look at it on YouTube, um, check it out with your family, and, and listen to those points. Write them down. You heard us say them, and if you weren't taking notes at the time, I was over here taking notes. Because, listen, in the banking industry, when you're needing resources, it's always important. First of all, it's important to know your banker. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I can and DVJ before you you come back in with your question and I we were sharing this in the in the office I remember years ago actually it was approximately nine years ago and I had the opportunity to purchase um, DSI Black Pages and I said to my husband he was like oh this is gonna be a major undertaking how much and when I gave him the numbers he looked at me like I was crazy mm. he was like no that, that was a mo- that was more than our mortgage but the first thing he said when he kind of came back to his senses was call your banker. And, and, and I answered, I said, well, who is that? He said, your banker, Michelle. <laughs> so I said, I said, that's my friend. He said, that's your banker. And sure enough, I, I called Michelle and she gave me the greatest advice. And I heard David say it and I heard Michelle allude to their team. It's like they've taken off the gloves, the gloves. And, and Wells Fargo has said to you, go out there and meet the people where they are. You can talk to us because you know us. You know our struggles. And you're able to kind of bring that on a, on a personal level. And so that was almost nine years ago. And today I am happy to say that I am the publisher owner of DSI Black Pages Tampa Bay. So thank woo, you woo. to my banker friend. <laughs> so as David said go into the bank and even if you're not going into their bank go into the bank Mm -hmm. but when someone comes on the show and they say (laughs) with such confidence hmm, we got it yep yeah we got it diva j okay so you know a lot of my questions are going to pertain to real life but i'll act like they don't so (laughs) let's assume that you have your house in order um you've been in business it's going well um, you've built your business credit, you've gotten a credit card out, you've begun building your business credit. A, a genuine question I have, and I think it's a lack of knowledge, of course. So when you consider getting a business loan, you've identified a good need, you need the loan, the product that works for you. How do business loans or do business loans affect your personal Ooh. income to debt ratio? So great question. Thank you. Uh, one of the benefits and this is where knowing how credit works exactly. is extremely important. Okay. Your debt to income ratio is how much debt you have versus how much is going out, right? Okay. So, or better, better yet, how much is going out versus how much is coming in. And so that, that comes into effect when you're trying to purchase a home. Many of us are aspiring home uh, homeowners or already exactly. are homeowners. Many of us are aspiring different things. So it's very important. Uh, the beauty in the business side is when you separate the two, they act as two separate entities. Your personal credit And what you have on your business credit, they don't affect necessarily. So specific to your debt-to-income ratio, anything you have under your business, let's say for your business you've got a line of credit. Let's say you have a credit card and you maybe have a loan. It's not going to affect your consumer, your personal debt-to-income ratio. Awesome. As long as. Uh As long as. There we go. There we go. In the name of your business. Sure. It is under the tax ID number of your business there is no other way to separate them Mm -hmm. you can't just say uh, well it's you can't say it's under your business and make it so (laughs) that doesn't work right you can't can't speak it no no (laughs) no that belongs to the business Uh uh-huh uh-huh no no that was just a business expense no (laughs) right no right right but 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 in the earlier stages though it is your 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 personal banking business is important because your business doesn't have anything Mm -hmm. so when you're just starting out you Mm -hmm. you will have to um as as david alluded to earlier you've got to go to sunbiz you've got to register your business your fictitious name do all of the right things if a certification that you need get the certification if you need license in order to be able to run and operate your business and make sure you get the appropriate license but those are just beginning steps so while we have two experts in the house and they're talking about first steps they're talking about what next so the first thing you've got to do is get your house in order keep that idea 
start developing that business plan, but make sure you're doing the first things first. Mm -hmm. DJ CEO, what you got? Well, um, <clears throat> I was listening, and, and it, it made me think about um, some of the trials and tribulations that I've gone through as a business mm. owner. Uh, early on, I can remember uh, getting a loan from, um, uh, gosh, what was the name of the company? Um, they're not in business anymore. It's a little small bank. And uh, I, I borrowed some money uh, for to, to buy some equipment. And it was, uh, it was a real struggle for me. Um, my advice to to a, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs is to is to try their best to avoid borrowing money until they really have uh, a, an income stream coming in so they can afford to pay a loan. You, you, most people will try and, and, and get uh, get a loan early on and and then they have they don't really have uh, the income the income mm -hmm. you know they, they're going on their personal strength which is could be good and then you know they, they're, they're using that money to, 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 to and they find themselves mm -hmm. what is it, Robin in a Peter situation to pay Paul? right mm -hmm. right, right. so so you've got to find for me mm -hmm. um and so n now i find myself in a position a position of strength and it's like wow you know i it's like you just said michelle walk into a bank and um know that they cannot tell you no mm -hmm. so, I, yes. I've been in business for, for for 23 years, and mm -hmm. I I feel like I'm in a position position where they can say where they have to say here just sign right here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. so, but it doesn't take everybody 23 years to get this thing done. Right. Uh, for for young generation people like Jeanette right here that that understand what business is all about, um, they should be able to walk in and see a guy like David Davis the Fifth, mm. and with your with your skill set, with your financial literacy, Man. can get them right into the position that they need to be in. All right. Well, thank you. We call it. Call it. You're on the air. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk Business with SJC here with my co-host, Diva J. Hello. Do you have a question for our bankers? Caller? Yes. Identify who you are. Who are we listening to? Hi, this is uh, Rodney Jones with Business Plans Plus. Hey, hey, Rodney Jones, business. <laughs> oh, wait, you get an applause? <laughs> wait, you know these people here at In Touch News uh, Radio? I, you you have your own personal applause? It, no, it, it, it's great to hear uh, Daryl and Michelle and, uh, and, and and David as well answering uh, answering questions. So And, and uh, they are yeah, answering absolutely. some great questions. And so there's there's a question that you have that you would like to um, talk about. You're a small business owner. And Daryl was just sharing with us when he started his business, he went out and, and took a personal loan. When Let's ask you a question. When you first got your start, did you look at um, a financial institution first to, to finance your business or had you already saved and prepared for it? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll answer your question directly. But before I even do that, it's, it's really, really important. I, I really need to shout out uh, my friend Michelle. Oh, and go ahead. Here's, here's, the, here's the reason why. Um, Wells Fargo has been uh, a part of the fabric of this community for a while. And, and, and hats off to, to Michelle and David and the Wells Fargo organization because I, you know, it, it's one thing to talk a good game, mm. but it's another thing to actually be there and, and, and be visible and actually show actions that show your commitment to the community. Um, I'm, inv yeah, I'm involved him a with Michelle with Absolutely. I'm, I'm involved with Michelle with the uh, United Negro College Fund, okay. with the uh, steering committee. Um, I, I've actually seen Wells Fargo in action with the uh, with Salida's House, which educates uh, 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 individuals who are looking to uh, first time home buyers who are looking to, to buy their uh, to, to buy their first home. And Michelle and, and Wells Fargo had, had been a great, great supporter of that organization, not only with their time and efforts, but with their financial contributions as, in, uh, as well. And, and, and that's really what a partner really is as it relates to this particular community. And again, before I said anything, I certainly wanted to make sure that we acknowledge that type of work because this organization, Michelle, you've been putting in work in this community for quite a while. And we've seen it and we felt it and we've noticed it. So thank you very much. For that thank, you. Yeah. Yeah. thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Absolutely. 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 
so, oh, so, Rodney, no, man, you, you, you that, that, that was great. No, I, 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 can, I can go home now. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, 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 you made real it thick. on. But, but you know what? And, and I'll add to that because um, we have supported Michelle when, when she's out doing certain things. Um, one of the things, and, and I have this on um, one of our talking points since you brought it up, um, Rodney, we were also going to, and we'll have Michelle um, speak a little bit about that. Another thing that Michelle is so passionate about, and that's um, med, med, I'm going to say med week, but it's med conference. And um, she is just coming off of that just a few weeks ago. So after you're done with the question I asked you, and then we'll come back and let you ask your question. And we will welcome the opportunity to hear Michelle Maynard talk to us about Medco and, and how that's helping small businesses. So that's something else that she does um, in order to help the business community. So your 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 question to us, um, how do you decide to, to do your funding for your business? Yeah, so, so my, my, my personal philosophy is very much like Daryl's. My, um, one of the things that was that I really wanted to do when I started my company was to actually fi- finance from within. And what okay. I mean by that finance is from look at internal sources, things like uh, family members, um, uh, uh, savings, et cetera, first, first. And then as I looked at a growth strategy in terms of what's, what's my plan moving forward, in terms of how I needed to grow my business and whether or not I needed incremental financing and capital to grow my business. Okay. Then I, I then I, I went to uh, specific uh, lenders, lending institutions, et cetera, when I needed to uh, add employees, when I needed to uh, manage working capital, manage cash flow, uh, uh, that particular perspective. So um, while it was a journey, the first step and what I recommend to my clients is look at internal sources first Okay. And then once you have a plan and strategy, which I think Michelle allu- alluded to a couple minutes ago, when you have a plan and strategy for growth in place, then you take a look at uh, other options as it relates to, not other options, but, but specifically um, lending institutions, et cetera, uh, as it relates to finance. I, I like the way that you covered those things, and we'll add a, a few more because that's what we want. That's what all of us started looking at um, before we went to the to the banking institutions. And you're absolutely right. You look at your personal assets. You look at you know your credit card, your balances on your credit card. You look from borrowing. Is there do you have collateral? What about your home? You look at cash. You may have money sitting in your retirement um, account or funds that you may be able to use. And then there's micro lending. Um, something that's happening and it's very very strong today is um, is crowdfunding. I have. A, I have yeah. a colleague and she went to, um, I believe it's Quick Start and, and was able to, I just got an email that she raised her first $30,000 woohoo, um, for the business that she's getting ready to, to start. So there's that option when you're looking for maybe a smaller dollar amount and you're not, or your house is not in order to where you can actually come to a financial institution. And then there's, um, there's SBA. And so when you're looking at the smaller loans for the, the smaller dollar amount and their investors that are out there, their capital venturists that are out there and they're looking to help um, small businesses. So you're right. Those are the things you want to look at first and look from within. So now you told us so much about what Michelle is doing in the community, David as well, but you have a question for our bankers. So we're going to go ahead and allow, uh, let's see, who are you addressing your first question to? Um, yeah, so, so this is both to, to Michelle and David, and this, this is uh, something I run into a lot, which is that there seems to be, over the last five, ten years, what I call an invasion uh, into the Florida market. And, and that's because so many people see um, economic growth opportunities in Florida specifically and in Tampa and in, in, in Tampa Bay uh, community as well. So my, my question is, as and I, I get these calls a lot, where business owners want to move to Florida, but they're deciding what markets they want to operate their businesses in, whether it's acquiring a business or whether or not it's relocating their business to the Florida market. So um, what's your perspective as it relates to what we would come on to tell a new business owner uh, in terms of why Tampa Bay in spe- uh, specifically would be a great market to, uh, uh, to build a business uh, and, and to invest in as opposed to other markets like Jacksonville, Orlando, um, uh, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. Okay, so location. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the things that I've heard from many business owners is that Tampa Bay offers some great resources between the chambers, 
um, other minority organizations. There, there's some great resources. But I've also found, Rodney, and I'm not certain how this agrees or conflicts with what you're seeing, that many are coming into the area with their businesses already established. Exactly. They're not coming in to establish a business. They're coming in with their businesses already established. Many of them are running from the cold <laughs> so that they can run their business year round. <laughs> uh, many of them are coming into the area because they see opportunity based on whatever industry that they are in. I am not seeing as many coming into the area to start a business. Mm. I am still seeing many who are already in the area going into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So there's that trend. Um, but uh, Tampa Bay offers some good resources. And a couple me, of them are in this room. Let me let me just say that 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 the, um, it's been. It, had I had the financial literacy uh, uh, twenty years ago. I think I probably would be a lot further on now, but you know, in hindsight, is always twenty twenty. Um, I'm glad I didn't, but had I had it, it would have made such a big difference. And so, that you guys offer financial literacy. What kind of an impact does financial literacy do for your client walking in the door? Well, before before we do that, let's make sure that um, we finished up with with Rodney. Can I? I want to address that question, Rodney. Oh, okay, oh, Rodney. Good, so good. we've got Diva J yeah. on, and we're going to um, allow her because she can speak the truth. She can speak to it. Yeah. So I started my business in Washington D.C. after graduating from college, but when I moved to Tampa, it wasn't for my business. It was to be closer to my village. But even still, the differences that I see, while D.C. is a great market to cultivate young millennial minority right. entrepreneurship um, because it's the home to the Mecca, uh, I digress. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I do believe, however, <laughs> um, Tampa is starting to kind of be that incubator huh. cultivation for the millennial. And, and for the millennial generation, tell me if I'm wrong, D5, uh, for the for the millennial generation, I think a lot of us started our businesses because the job market just really wasn't where it was before. And so either it was get a job of something that was paying you less than the degree you earn, mm -hmm. continue your education and get a master's, or start your business. And so a lot of my friends and colleagues, we started our businesses out of college at a very young age. And so awesome. in, in my 30s now, I'm trying to make sure I'm financially literate. So to DJ CEO's point, I can make those better decisions. But I'm finding that it's not necessarily about the market where their job is. It's about the education that you have as the entrepreneur. Awesome. Awesome. Great point. So you've heard from, from two experts. But listen, Rodney, we're going to have to take a commercial break. But we do want to say thank you so much for supporting the show for calling in to talk to to michelle and to to david and so we'll be back after the break but you can also put a comment on on, on your facebook post be sure to like us on facebook but we'll be live so shoot us another question if you wish thank, thank you, you everybody. Take care. all right take, take care, care. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. This is Linda Archie with Tyre Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month, beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me, 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Hi, this is Trina Johnson with Caldwell Banker Real Estate, the real estate agent you've been looking for. If you want top dollar for your home or you're looking to make a purchase, call me at 813 813- 244-6953. Again, 813-244-6953 and let me list your home. 
We're playing your favorite old school. so much. Welcome back to Let's Talk Business with SJC. You know we're in the house with my co-host today, Diva J. Hello. She was sharing with us about answering, actually she answered a question that Rodney, thank you Rodney for calling in and he was talking about, actually it was Michelle that was telling us how businesses are now moving to the Tampa Bay area and they're already established businesses and so Diva J was able to speak to that point. However, there was a comment that Michelle wanted to make. And so, Rodney, I know you're still listening to the show. And so you had asked um, about location. You had asked about business growth, the community. What's this like? Business is moving here. And so Michelle had another point that she wanted to speak to. I wanted to speak to the comment that was made earlier by our DJ CEO. Oh, okay. We <laughs> and out. it was about how many people are starting hopefully having saved up and using some of their personal resources to start well. I had an instance, it was several years ago though, where someone said, Michelle, I've been in business for five years and I haven't had to borrow a dime. Okay. Now I need money, y'all won't give me none. And I said, correct. <laughs> we don't give money to businesses. We lend money to businesses. Mm. The challenge that they had is all the money they'd saved up to start their business, they depleted every penny. What they hadn't even considered was using some of the funds that they'd saved up to put it in a CD and borrow against it. Borrowing against some of their own funds as opposed to spending it down to the penny and then deciding they needed to borrow money. And I say this, I use this saying often, when do you buy a fire extinguisher? Mm. <laughs> Before there's a fire. You don't wait until it's too late to decide to establish the relationship with your banker and to get your financing in place to grow your business. Those are well keys said. I want to make. Very that, that, that's and a, we wanted a story and she gave us a, a story. Absolutely. And you just said relationships. You know, you, when you started your business, your husband said, call your banker. <laughs> yes, he did. Who'd you call? I called Michelle. But you had a relationship with Michelle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so for, for all these absolutely. young people out here that know D5, they want to start a business, that has got a relationship with you, you know, they just need to pick up the phone and call you. And, and, and the relationship is there. Now you can teach them what it is that they need to do. And can and I, you're can, right. That's so very, very important because, and Michelle talked about one of the things that Wells Fargo is doing with business development is working with nonprofits. And so we got to see Wells Fargo right here on the campus of 5508. Shout out again, Derek Blue. We did the Black Wall Street experience. You all helped them to, to be able to, to put that on. But then the other thing is, so if you're in the community, you're active in the community, we have an incubator here, and I'm listening to what David is saying. I've listened to what DJ CEO and Jeanette as well, and we've got over 30 businesses out here. We would love to have you all come back and do one of your workshops here Absolutely. with all of the, the small business owners. And, and David, you can just, I mean, there we've got a lot of young millennial business owners out here. And one of the things, that, as I'm listening to both of you all, you just telling it like it is. Hmm? You know, Michelle just speaks it. People have a, uh, they have an idea of what banking looks like and what it sounds like, right? And so a lot of people think it's, you know, you come in and it's this, it's that. Honestly, just be honest. Sit down, talk to the person. Talk to them as if you were talking to, you know, a friend. Okay. Hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Give me your advice. Now, obviously, you go to certain friends for certain advice. You know, you this don't, you true. don't, you don't, you don't go to the, uh, the one who didn't, uh, 
Let's see how we would put the this. one who broke an axe how to get money. That one, <laughs> correct. You, you 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 wouldn't. You'd go to you the professional that knows, two. right? So when you come in, put it all out there. Put it all out there. Our our goal is to give you the best options. And something uh, DJ CEO you uh, you spoke about earlier was uh, you know a type of a product, right? Knowing kind of what you need, but it's extremely important that you know the whole playing the whole field. You can't options. just, hey, I'm going in and getting a loan. Well, hey, what if you're doing something smaller that may not necessarily require a loan? Maybe you need to get a line of credit, right? Or maybe you have something that you can get some revolving on a, uh, a credit card. Maybe it's something as simple as that, which, again, adds to the relationship. If a, if a lender sees that you've been having a relationship with them, whether it be a credit card, a line of credit, you're making payments over, over the years, when you come up for that next move, you know, if you know, hey, I think I want to expand. Okay, yes, I am just starting. But in five years, my goal, my plan is to expand into another location. I want to have this location here. Why wouldn't you start today? You already know what you're going to be. You already know where you're going to be and what you want to do. Why wouldn't you start today building towards that? I like that. So getting the conversation started. But one of the things when I mentioned Michelle and you were talking about relationships, building a relationship with your banker. As a business consultant, people will come to me and, and, and I've had the opportunity to share a number of nonprofit events. But I, first thing I say to them, before you start fundraising, you need to friend raise. Absolutely. Get to know the people. Mm -hmm. if, if you if, Before you send that letter out asking for money, do you know these people? Have you had a relationship with them? What have you done with them in the community? So I'm hearing you all talking about relationships. Get a relationship with your banker. Go in, sit down, have the conversation with them. So before you ask for the money, I already know about them or have an account with them or get to know the individual. Take some of the classes that they're talking about. We're going to hear from Diva J, but Michelle, I do want you to come back and talk to us about what just happened with Medco. Okay. Diva J. Okay. So I was just going to say to the point of building a relationship and understanding how it feels, it can be a little intimidating. You know, to the point of one of my Facebook followers, he said, you know, I feel like they only give loans to rich people. Well, I think it's about all, one being open minded, not counting yourself out or selling yourself short. Um, and then also about knowing the right people. Like I can see us having a really good conversation, mm -hmm. whereas you've gone into branches of different banks and, and sometimes it's a little cold. Um, but I think it's about anything, just kind of finding that right fit. And so as a business owner and, and now having migrated, you know, I am in the market for a nice um, small business banker consultant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I digress. Found I digress. Him, so, found him. Um, very may well have. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to drop that nugget, but I yeah, definitely know we want to give yeah, give Michelle the floor though, because there's a lot more valuable information I'm sure you guys have to share. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the MET conference that you guys are just off of. Yes. The Minority Enterprise Development Conference is designed well, let me back up. It is put on by the Minority Enterprise Development Corporation. Years ago, when the Minority, um, when the Department of Commerce Correct. closed the um, MBDCs across the country, Med Week here in Tampa Bay was going away. But a group of volunteers decided no, didn't want it to go away, so they kept it going. They kept it and going. ultimately formed Minority Enterprise Development Corporation, which now puts on Minority Enterprise Development Conference and several other events. The Minority Enterprise Development Conference is designed to bring opportunities to minority business yes. owners. Those opportunities include opportunities to connect mm -hmm. with supplier diversity professionals, purchasing agents, to get key information to help their businesses to grow. And we also use that opportunity to applaud a key minority business owner and a minority business advocate. Awesome. 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 And so I can speak to that, have, having been a supporter and a participant and a benefactor um, of MedCorp. So some of my um, customers today actually came out of being an attendee. But I did want to ask you so that we can get more involvement um, from small business owners and, and the community. Um, okay, well, we'll just have to have her on, on another day to talk about MedCorp. One of the things we wanted to finish the show with, so we've talked about what individuals need to do. So they're coming into your bank. 
We're telling them to establish a relationship. Get that started first and foremost. To the small business owner that may not be in that position, what advice would you give them in order to get to that readiness state so that they can do business with you? My thought would be find out what it takes to get there. And the way you do that is to talk to somebody. As was said earlier, establish that relationship. You mentioned that, yeah, sometimes the bank can be cold. That's because people walk in, they don't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good point. Exactly. That's the only reason it's cold. I walk into most of our branches, and because I know somebody, I'm waving. Hey, <laughs> hey, how you doing? But I know someone, and that's the difference. Then it's not cold difference. anymore. Mm-hmm. David? All right, Wall Market. Now you've met your David. For, for me, um, echoing the same, you know, relationship. That's how you're going to hear out of me, relationship, relationship, relationship. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it's extremely uh, beneficial for that business owner, that aspiring business owner. Do the research. Educate yourself. We've we we've, we've we're, we're we're here live from yes. four different platforms. We're streaming on In Touch News yes. Radio. We're, we're here on this Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Do the research. Reach out to someone. You know, um, if there has already been uh, an established business in that market, or if there's already someone doing what you want to do. Don't be afraid to walk over and say, hey, uh, I see you're doing this. Mm. I'm thinking about doing it. What, 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 what tips can you offer? What, what, what ideas, you know, what, what didn't work out for you? Because if someone can tell me how to avoid some of the, uh, the, the traps or if they can tell me how to avoid some of the stumbles, it's valuable information. It is. It is. Just ask. Just and it, ask. It's, it's true. The least painful mistakes are somebody else's. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. So, you know, Find the information. Do your, do your homework. Do your do homework. homework. And then reach out and touch someone. Find that song. Reach out and touch someone. So we want to say thank you, Diva J. Um, we will, I don't know if we're going to be able to do final thoughts. So let's go ahead and let you know that Let's Talk Business with SJC. We are celebrating National Black Business Month. So remember, it culminates on August the 31st, Saturday at 11.31 a.m. If you're a small business owner, we still have vending um, spots available, but the community to come out. We've been giving you 31 ways in 31 days. Now we're asking you, please make sure that you spend $31 with a Black-owned business. We do have 21 businesses that we're going to shout out, and we will do it on our Facebook post because it was so important for you to hear from the expert, the bankers that we had in the house. So we want to say thank you to Michelle Maynard. Thank you. And thank you to David Davis. Woohoo! Thank you, family. Thank you for tuning in. Signing off. Bye-bye. Thank you.